People from various walks of life visit courtrooms. Their reactions vary depending on the case. Some act tamely, while others may show belligerent behavior. You were trying to get away from you, and you murdered a man like you! From someone acting harmlessly to someone causing chaos inside the court. Here are some cases where craziest convicts in court of all time. <laughs> the incident revolves around Calvin Lloyd Griffith. In 2013 in Florida, Calvin Lloyd Griffith stole a Volkswagen Passat from the parking lot of South Florida High School. The cops apprehended Calvin Lloyd Griffith for the act. During the trial, sometimes suspects may suddenly do something that leaves the entire courtroom stunned. Was Calvin Lloyd Griffith acting in a similar manner? Mm-hmm, nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got problems. All right, your mom is here with a bag full of, it looks like his medicine. Yes. Okay. Griffith was charged with burglary and trespassing on a school safety zone and was given an $18,000 bond but was ordered held until his next court appearance. While Griffith just stole the car from the parking lot, our next individual took the life of a person. That's what yeah. I've been waiting on. That's just like well, I told not, you today. Yeah, I, mean, I know you're not saying it and I know room. why. The case centered around Robert Howard. In 2017, in Escambia County, Robert Howard ended the life of Naomi Jones. As soon as the police began their investigation, they discovered that Robert was the one who had carried out this horrible deed. The officers then filed charges against him. Detectives are veterans of the police department. They have heard and seen things that very few of us would ever want to see. All right. This investigator in finger, or agent in finger. Used to work here. No, no. How you doing? Good, how you doing? What's your name? Robert. Robert, Robert I'm Matt. Okay. All right. Can you give me your full name? Robert Howard. Robert Howard. Latroy? Yeah, L-A-T-R-O-Y. What's your birthday? 31979. And where do you live? Fruit in 210 Ball Lane. Lot 30. Fruit in Alabama. And a phone number for you? Um, 251. Mm -hmm. oh. 363. 850. 363? Yes. Okay. 7930. Is that a cell or home? Cell. Cell? Cell. And that's your cell? Yes. Okay. And where do you work? Freight car. Freight car? Freight. F R I T C A R. Where's that at? Bruton. Do you have an address for them? Mm. Either 1865 or 1365. I don't want to say 1865, Douglas Avenue. Douglas? Douglas Avenue. Douglas yeah. Avenue. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Before we get started, can you mm -hmm. I want to read over your rights, okay? okay? Like I said, you're not under arrest at the mm -hmm. time. I just want to read these over before we get started talking about anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, today's date is the 7th of June, mm -hmm. 2017. It's Game County Sheriff's Office. Mm -hmm. It is. 1056. 10.56. All right. All right. Yeah, the rights remain silent. Mm -hmm. Anything you say can be used as evidence against you in court. Okay. You have the right to have a lawyer present while being questioned. Mm -hmm. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, a lawyer will be appointed for you without cost before questioning. If you wish to have any answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering questions at any time. You understand those right? Yes. Okay. If you understand you want to speak with us, just print there and sign. And like I said, the other investigator gave me the information that she had obtained when she talked to you earlier this morning. And I know you've been talked to prior to that also. So mm -hmm. you probably are like getting a little bit 
worn out of the talking to us, but we just have to go over details just because, you know, it is um, a missing little girl, or not a missing little girl, she's now deceased. Um, and you live in the apartment, or you, your girlfriend lives in the apartment. apartment. What apartment does she live in? 216. Apartment 216? All right. And what's her name again? Lauren. Lauren Ewing. What is it? Lauren Ewing. Ewing? Yes. E-W? E -W? E -W okay. And it's L-A-U-R-E-N. And you guys have a child together? Yes. One year Baby, old right? Yes. One year old? Okay. And where does she work? Um, she works at Walgreens. Walgreens? Yes. Which one? Night that blue. Okay. And you work at Frick Car? Yes. What is your schedule at work? Um, work night shift. We go in. Uh, time between 3.30 and 5 and we work like till like 8 hours is up or if we have like a long night maybe we may work like 10 hours 8 to 10 hours okay so you usually go in about 3.30 or between 5 in the and 5 afternoon yes. and then you get off usually about what time between the hours of maybe 11.30 and 1 one thirty somewhere from there okay 1 to 1.30 yeah. okay um, what about like days of the week do you work? Um, Sunday through Thursday. That's a regular? You don't switch yeah. around like no. weekends or anything like that? Um, Just... Unless, only time I may, unless I'm used off on Fridays and Saturdays, but well, I'm always off on Saturdays. May work a Friday if like one of the guys on day shift needs mm -hmm. to be off Friday. He may work for me like one night and I work for him like that Friday other than that. That's it. Okay. Um, do you, I know they went through it already, but did you work that Wednesday that Naomi went missing? The that initial Wednesday day? night, yes. You worked that Wednesday night? What time yeah. did you work that night? We went in a little after five. Okay, so 5.10, 5.15. Uh, we clocked in like 5.36. 5.36. Who's we, just everybody, like a group? Well, it's just me and one other guy that works there at night because we just set up everything to be prepared for the next day. What's his name? Jeffrey Lambeth. Lambeth? Yes. Does he live in Burton? He lives in Plummerton. Plummerton? Yes. Do you know his number? By chance, off the top of your head? If I'm not mistaken, it's 727-1533. Um, they got my phone, I don't okay. know if they still have my phone, send my phone. So. Okay. So 5.30 p.m. Wednesday the 31st, mm -hmm. you were clocked in at work. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when, do you remember what time you got off that night? Whenever the eight hours is up, like I said, whether we get through early or whatever, whenever the eight hours is up, that's when we got, when we got through before the eight hours was up. So that would put us like 1.30. 1.30? All right. All right. And earlier, before you went to work that day, mm -hmm. what were your, where'd you wake up in the morning? Here. No. Over at this apartment? Yes. Okay, so you woke up at the apartment over mm -hmm. here. Um, what time would you say? Would you mm, it, was, it was early. It was early in the morning. The exact time I really don't know, but it was early in the morning. Before 9? Yes, before 9. Okay. Nine. Before 8? Uh, between about 7. I'd say about 7, maybe. 7? It's, it's like I usually don't sleep past 8, if that. But, okay. Yeah. And then, what did you two do? Um, well, I went to work. I went to the gym that morning. What gym? Um, real time fitness. Where's that at? On oh, nine miles. And what time were you there? I was I was there about nine nine thirty. You have to use like a key card. Or yeah, that's on my to... that's on my car keys. If they got those two, I mean, I didn't get, yeah. get anything in my car. So keys. you have to like you swipe. have to scan yourself in. Yes. What time did you take Lauren to work? She drove her own car to work. You didn't take her? Mm, I didn't take her to work. Okay. I just went I and got her on her lunch you. break. I just went oh, okay. That's where break. I was confused yeah. a little bit. Okay. So she took herself to work. Mm -hmm. um, what does she drive? She drives a Honda. It's like a small gray Honda. It's not a gray? Accord. Yes, gray. Gray? Okay. It's not a Accord. It's a... Civic? Yes. Civic? Civic yes. Okay. okay. And what do you drive? I have a silver um, Altima. Nissan Altima? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is that mm -hmm. registered here or Alabama? It's originally in Alabama. Alabama, okay. 
What year is it? 2010. Okay, so Lauren drove herself to work, mm -hmm. and then you went to the gym, 9 to 9.30, and then after that? Um, when I left the gym, came back to the apartment. Um, stayed at the apartment until I went to see Lauren on her lunch break. That was okay. about 11.30. So you got home about 10 to the apartment? Well, I got, I say 10 something, because oh, I said when yeah, I go to the gym, out. I used to stay about mm -hmm. an hour, so. I said about 10 something, yeah. Okay. Like 10.30? We'll just say 10.30. 10.30? Or, I mean, I'm just... I, mean, I, don't, I don't know exact yeah, time. Yeah, just, okay. I would just say 10 So after something. 10, yeah. before 11. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you went to get her for lunch. For lunch, yes. Okay. And... Picked her up for lunch, and um, we came back to the apartment. What time did you pick her up? 11.27. Okay. And then you came back to the apartment came for lunch? Came back to the apartment for okay. lunch. She had to get another shirt. Um, she works in the pharmacy, but when they work the floor, or have to work up front. It's a certain pullover shirt that they have to wear. So by her working overtime, she was working up front. So she had to get that shirt. So she got that shirt. She got her something to eat. And we got back to Walgreens. It was after 12 because she was a little late getting back. I know that because she's going to be late getting in. Okay. After 12, like? Wouldn't, like, mm -hmm. maybe a couple minutes, three to five minutes after 12. Okay. Like that. All right. And then after you dropped her off? Dropped her off, um, came back over. I was gonna go to the Dollar General and get something, but I didn't go in because it started storming. So I just turned and went to Bruton. Did you get out of that car at yeah, all at Dollar General? No. You just drove through I the did, parking lot? I, when I got ready to pull in, I didn't even pull all the way in when I turned in. Turned around right there. Like while I turned in the spot, turned around like when you pull into the Dollar General, not in front of the store, but they have another parking spot over here facing back to the street. Mm -hmm. Pulled over there, Which back around. Dollar General is that? Um, Davis Highway. Davis, okay. Like by the old academy over there? Right up from West Florida Hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, so Dollar General and then where? I came to Bruton from there. You went straight from Bruton yeah. from Dollar General? Yeah, I came to Bruton to, I was going to see a friend before they went to a funeral. Okay. But um, when I made it to Bruton, they were already gone, so. All right, so what time did you arrive in Bruton? Mm, about 1.30ish. 140 maybe some up in there. Okay. And then what'd you do when you got there? Um, when she was gone, I went on to the house. Went to my house. Your and house? Yes. And that's the two ten Ball Street? Yes. Okay, so yes. you got into Bruton, you didn't make any stops, you just went hmm, straight, straight over to your house. Straight to my house. Okay. And then how long were you at your house? Hmm, maybe about 45 minutes, maybe. All right. 45 to an hour, maybe. Um, left. Um, Where'd you go? Came back to Pensacola. Well, I called Jeff and told him that I needed to come back to Pensacola. And, um, Jeff's your co-worker? Yes. Okay. And I told him I was coming back and um, I needed to get my gear because it was storming. I didn't have my boots. I didn't have my rain jacket or anything. Came back here to get that. Made it back here, maybe like something to four, right at four, four-ish, maybe. Okay, so you got back in Pensacola about mm -hmm. 4 p.m.? Yeah. All right. And grabbed your raincoat boots grabbed my and then gear. immediately back to Bruce? Yes, when I grabbed everything, I came out the door. When I came out the door, I came downstairs, that's when the little girl's mom and another older lady stopped me and asked me if I had seen a little girl. And I told him, no, nah, I just came out of the apartment. And that's when she told me her daughter was missing. And I talked with them for a few minutes and I told her I'm not being rude, but I got to go to work and I left. Okay. So how long would you say you were at the apartment complex when you came back over there? Mm, it wasn't 10 minutes. Okay. Just long enough to grab two Gator, uh, two power aids, my rain jacket and my boots. Okay. And then back to Bruton. Back to Bruton. Okay. And when did you arrive in Bruton? Um, like I said, around about 5.30. Could we clock in at 5.36? I'm going to say like... So you went straight to work? Straight to work, okay. yes. All right. And then you worked until you said 1.30? One, 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 yes. And then what did you do after that? Um, got off and I came back to Pensacola. Okay. Where'd you go in Pensacola? Back to Lawrence. It was straight over to Johnson. Straight, yes. Okay. 
And what time would you say you got there? I say if I left at one thirty, you got about maybe like two thirty five, two forty, because it's usually within an hour. Okay. And then and took a shower, watched T V until I got tired of getting to bed. Okay. Was Lauren there when you got back? Yes, Lauren's always there. Okay. Yeah. I woke always tap her and let her in the house. Yeah. Did you wake her up that night? And I always tap her. Anytime, whenever I get in the house, I always tap her and let them know I'm there. Did she acknowledge you? She always said, mm-hmm. That's all she said, mm-hmm. And what time did you say you got back to the apartment? Between two, about 2.35, 2.40, somewhere there. What, uh, what vehicle did you... I always drive my vehicle to work. Which one? Uh, the, the Nissan Altima. Okay. So you were in that car that night? Yes. I'm okay. in that car every night. Okay. I got a question. Mm -hmm. I've been, wait, am I, am I, is my house and vehicle going to be searched? Because yes. I've been looking, okay, that's all yes. I'm asking. Because yes. I haven't cleaned it. Everything is still yes. the same. That's, that's what they're I, doing right okay. now. So That's, that's yeah. what I've been waiting on. That's just like yeah. I well, told not, you today. Yeah, I, mean, I know you're not saying that. And I know apartment. why y'all are taking precautions because mm -hmm. of you know, yeah. my status. And like I say, you know, i just been waiting on this to happen because I knew it was going to happen. So that's all, that's all I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. That's fine. What is your, your background or your history or well, whatever? Well, when I was in high, well, when I, was, I got out of high school, me and the girls messed around. Um, she got pregnant. And her, her was like a master or whatever. So it was more of, I made it her than it being consensual to the point of, yeah, because we had been doing this the whole summer. And so I said, I got, um, well, I copped out because I didn't have no money to try to afford a lawyer, so I had to cop out, and I did 15 years. How old were you? Like 18 years old. And how old was she? Like, okay. What year was that? 1998. What was the charge? Um, first degree. First degree. Yes. Yeah. And that was in Alabama? Yes. The detectives interrogated Robert. Soon, his mask started to slip as his true face started to surface. How long had y'all had a relationship? We... Mm, it was... We started messing around this summer, you know, so... I mean, well, we knew each other, you know, for years, so... Did y'all go to the same school? Yes, we went to the same school, yes. What school? Okay. Did this... She live near you? Did y'all hang out, or...? Mm, well, we, uh... We started messing around when I was playing in the three-on-three -three tournament because everybody was at the gym together. So we would see each other, and really it was just something thrown out there but it ended up happening. When you say y'all you started seeing her in the summer, is that like, do you mean right after you graduate or got out of school or did you start seeing her in the summer before school ended? Uh, it's like, I, I seen her all through school, but it was nothing, you know, ever said or done. But like that summer, you know, we hooked up, we start hooking up during that summer right out there in that school. Okay. How many times did y'all hook up before, I guess, you got y'all got caught. Um, from that summer, all the way up until like December. So, May. It was like well, more like June, June, July. June, July, August, September, October, November. These about six months. Yeah. Okay. Was there was there another charge that you had in your history? Yeah, it was. Um, Say the same thing. It was just another girl put in. They was like basically like I did this same thing to this other girl. You got her pregnant, or you just no? I didn't okay. get her pregnant. It was just we was messing around, and she say I made her. And it's the same time that this other girl said the same thing. And basically, was... they said I did the same thing to both of them in the same night at the same time. So you were eighteen. How was it old was this girl? Same age. So both paperwork. I don't know if this changed, but in my paperwork. I, they had like two different ages in the cells, a white female. It's not a white female, it's two black females and they were the same age. I don't know if they ever changed it because they got my tattoos yeah, and everything Yeah, because I thought else. one of them was a younger female. Yeah, they, 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 got, they got a lot of my stuff messed up. They got okay. the tattoos and everything messed up. So that, you know, I don't know if they changed it or fixed it, but mm -hmm. we're all like
And it's two black females. Okay. Well, they had to be under 18, right? What kind of, uh, just real quick, what kind of phone do you have? Um, it's, uh, the G... Is it an iPhone or an Android phone? It's an Android phone. Okay. And the number that you, that number you gave me is the number to that phone mm -hmm. that you have? The 363-7930? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a, uh, like a Google account or anything? Um... I got a, had a, a Gmail, like a um, email. What is that? Uh, I got a Yahoo account as well. What is sure. that? Um, Lauren's phone number. Um, 601-874-0418. Is that her cell phone? Yes. Okay. All right, so she has her cell phone and this is your cell phone? Yes. Okay. The missing girl, um, have you ever seen her around the complex or? I see her all the time when we were in and out. I said when we would come in, it would be either playing between the complexes or on her mom's back balcony because going up the steps, you can see their balcony or their back porch rather from the balcony. Um, they would always speak whenever we would come in and out. And other than that, that was about it. She dances a lot back there, doesn't she? I guess. On the, ba I mean, on the balcony. Well, they'd be back there playing most of the time mm -hmm. when I see them as far as dancing. I don't know. Yeah. I heard she does a lot of dancing. Mom says she dances on the back porch a lot. That's what we see them back there. Was she friendly? I mean, I mean, she always spoke. I mean, I said, other than that, that's pretty much all I know about her. I said, she would always speak. If she seen us, she would speak. Regardless if we seen her or not, she would let us know that she was there. She would speak. I gotcha. Um, did she ever come over to y'all's apartment or anything? She's never been to our apartment. So We've never been to Lawrence. If she has, she's been there when I wasn't there. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Lauren told me one day, that they missed the bus and they came and used her phone to call their mom and let her know they missed the bus. Other than that, that's that's all I know about them being there. Okay. So she's never been in Lauren's apartment other than just not when at I was the there. door? Not, not when I was there. Okay. What about, have they ever been in your cars? No. Either one of your cars? No. Um, did you see uh, that girl that Wednesday at all? No, sir. When was the last time you saw her? I have no idea. Um, I have no idea. Maybe like, it may have been that weekend maybe, between Friday and Sunday, somewhere up in there, it was because I was off. I know it may have been like that Friday, Saturday. So you were off. staying there the whole weekend? Yeah, you used to come down the weekend, yes. Okay. How, uh, how often do you stay at that apartment? Um, I mean, I mean how, if you... I'm allowed, okay, with my um, regulations of what I can and can't do, I'm allowed to stay anywhere three days, no more than three days. So I'll stay like two, three days at a time. I go home for a day. I can come back for three more days. So that's how I usually do. How long have you been involved with uh, Lauren? Mm -hmm. A couple of years. Like two, three? So I mean, like two thousand, since about 2015. Okay. You guys only have the one child together? Just one, yes. Okay. Um, how did you meet Lauren? Um, we met at a parade, at a um, high school parade. 
here in Pensacola? Yeah, or? in Bruton. Oh, in Bruton. Is yes. she from Bruton too? No, um, her best friend is from Bruton, and they were there together, and that's how I met her. Okay. How old is uh, Lauren? Lauren's thirty. Thirty. Yes. And how old are you now? Thirty-eight. Um, you said that uh, the missing girl was never in your car or anything like that mm -hmm. and the only interaction you've had with her is just like if I see her she sees me or she sees however we're she speak that's it do you hang out in any certain areas of Pensacola or what do you do when you're here in Pensacola we're pretty much at the apartment Okay. I said, if I go work out in the morning, I go work out in the morning. And that's pretty much it. Do you ever go, I mean, do you have any other friends that live in Pensacola? Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, do you know anybody, say, over in the Lincoln Park area? Where's Lincoln Park? He said something to me earlier about Lincoln Park. What is Lincoln Park? That's, um... He said something, I said, well, he said something to me about Lincoln Park. And I asked him, he said something like west of the interstate. I don't know which way it's west. Like if you're coming from Bruton and you're coming south on Highway 29, mm -hmm. um, where do you usually turn off to go to? I turn the apartment right there at um, at a uh, right at Nine Mile. I get off on Nine Mile. Okay. If you kept coming south, like past Nine Mile, mm -hmm. and came up to like. Uh, you know where Carpenter's Campers is on the corner of uh, mm -hmm. 29 and mm -hmm. Detroit, mm -hmm. right there? Mm -hmm. Like if you took a right going west, that would be like Lincoln Park area oh, okay. the, over in there. I got you. you know anybody over in that area? You, do you ever go over in that area? We went to church over there before at uh, You can describe the church if you can't remember. Is this, is this a big church? Is it so like a big out. metal building mm -hmm. church that yeah. sits like off the road mm -hmm. over there? Okay. How often do y'all go to church there? Mm. Whenever we, um, maybe once or twice a month, maybe. When was the last time you went? Just this curious. Day of Sunday. Okay. Today's Wednesday. So this past Sunday you were at church there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that the only time you go over on that part of town? Okay. Um, were you in that area or over that way on uh, last Wednesday, the 31st? No, sir. Okay. Or June 1st? No, no. Okay. Your car describe it to me. You said it's silver. It's a, it's a silver 2010 Nissan Altima. Um, nothing special about it. Uh, has a two door, four door. Four door. Yeah. Four door. You know, tinted windows, yes. rims. Mm, tinted windows, no rims. Stock rims. Yeah, it's factory. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, And said the last time you saw, I'm just going to call her Naomi. That's her name, Naomi. Okay. Um, would have been this that past yes. weekend. Okay. Did y'all have any interaction then? Or? No. Not that you know, I say if it was, it was speaking, coming in or he's out. How old do you think she is? They say, well, I know they say she's 12 years old. I'm okay. a liar. Before that, I mean, how old do you think she was? A kid, maybe, I said maybe 10, 11. Okay. That. So she looked young? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, did, what time did you say you left the apartment that day? I to, to go up to Bruton? Which time? Because I went twice. I went to, uh, I went to see it had been friend. earlier in the I day. I went to see a friend. I left around like, Posted by 12, 15, 12, 30. Okay. I'm going to see what time. Um, Yolanda Mitchell. When did you do that? Um, that Wednesday. 
Okay. I didn't have that in the list of stuff we went through. Where was it before you dropped Lauren off or after you it was dropped? after I dropped Lauren off. When I dropped Lauren off, that's where That's I where went. you went yeah, before I went to see, Yeah, I was going to see her. Okay. Now, she lives in Bruton. That's why I was going to Bruton to see. Okay. So, you got into Bruton. It's, I have down 130 to 140. Mm -hmm. And then you went to? I was going to see her, but when... What's her name again? Yolandra Mitchell. Y-O-L-U-N-D-R-A Mitchell. M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L. -L. Okay. You're, and you were going to go to her house? Yes. Where she live? I cannot remember the street name, but it's at 112. Her phone number is 251-591-6108. But when I, um, by the time I got it, I already left to go to the funeral. But we talked from the time I left Pensacola till I got to Brew. You did say that your friends already went to the funeral, but yeah. I didn't know you were meeting eight yes, specific stuff. So. Yes. Okay. What kind of relationship you have with her? We mess around. Okay. We mess around. How old is she? 37. Okay. And I assume Lauren doesn't know. No, about. she doesn't. Okay, I got you. Just a little something on the side? Yes. I got you. All right. Um, does your car have any, like, GPS on it or anything like that? No. And you said you left the apartment complex about 12.30ish to go up that way? I found up Walgreens and then we went back to the complex. So if we talked to, what was her name again? Yolanda. Yolanda. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure she'll tell you that we talked the whole time and I went to see her. Actually, we took a lunch break that night on Wednesday night and I went to see her for about 30 minutes and we took a lunch break that Wednesday night. Did you have the same phone number that you gave me? Did you have it that night that you called her on? Or is it a different number? Than no, I called her on. It was that phone number? Social so social your phone, phone yes. record would say that yeah. you called her for a yes. certain amount of time that day? Yes. Okay. Um, and you gave me her phone number so I mm -hmm. could just check to see that you called her. Yeah. Okay. You went to her house on, the, on your lunch break? Yes, that evening, yes. Okay. How long were you there? Mm, about 30 minutes, maybe. It was just like a lunch break. And she lived like right around the corner. Well, yeah, basically right around the corner from Fred, the neighborhood over across from it. Oh, so she lives real close yeah, to you? Yeah, she lives real close to you. What time did you take your lunch break? Yeah, about 8.39. Yeah, 8.39. Would you say the duration of your call, phone call with her on the way to Burton was? Um, it's going, because the service is going to cut in and out. So it's going to say, you know, from this time, this time, this. But I called her maybe, you know, once I got maybe 29. So I'm going to say about, I talked to her until she went into the service. You know, I said she went to the service before I actually made it all the way to Burton because she had to go to Evergreen. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe 40 to 45 minutes, maybe. What kind of girls are you into? I mean, what's your, what do you like? Mm -hmm. Like grown women. I mean, women is my age. I mean, like, I really have no preference of what size or, you know, how fat or how skinny, how tall or thin, but they're going to be legal. You know, I'm not, I don't fool with no kids. I don't mess with no teenagers, anything like that. I mean, you like younger girls? Like, I mean, I haven't been with anyone younger than Lauren. What's the youngest girl you've been with? Lauren is the youngest girl I've been with. She's 30? 30, yes. I got you. Is there any reason, like, your DNA would be on Naomi's body or anything like that? Uh, I don't see why it would be. We've never been in spit distance of each other. So, there's no reason it would be. Okay. So, you've never had any physical contact? None with whatsoever. Okay. What 
what if what if I were to tell you that your car was in the area where her body was found that night? No, that's impossible. Why? I mean, because it, it could have been. Why? Tell me why. Because when I have my car, it's either at work, when I live work, I come straight back to um, Johnson Avenue, Lawrence apartment. Did anybody else have your car that night? No one ever has my car. So you don't know, does Lauren ever drive your car? She has a few times, but it's been mm, a little while since she's drove my car. Okay. You don't ever loan your car out? No. Okay. If we were to subpoena your phone records, I gotta show you in that area. You wouldn't show me in that area. Okay. What, uh, I'm just going to be honest with you. What, what time did you pick Naomi up? I never picked Naomi up. Just being honest with you. You sure about that? I'm positive. Well, about the time you leave your apartment is the time she goes missing. But the thing about that is, when I drop Lauren off, I go straight to Bruton. So how is it that I can pick her up? The thing about that is, is that we already have your phone records. Okay. And you were at the apartments at 1.30. I was gone at 1.30. Phone records show no, you were there at 1.30. That phone number that you gave me it's phone number we subpoenaed mm -hmm. for the records. You were at the apartments at 1.30. You were not in Bruton. I was on my way to Bruton. You were. I'm not going to argue okay. with you. I mean, you don't have to argue, but, but okay, just, okay. If you say I was at the apartment, just please search my license. Nothing has been changed in my car since the day that the first officer flipped through it and looked through it. Everything is in there. If you find anything in that car, it's going to be from your laundry Mitchell. And when she sits in that front seat and talks to me. Other than that, that's it. Do y'all have sex in your car? And we've never had sex in the car. No. She ever perform oral sex on you in that car? No, she hasn't. Okay. Howard was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. While Robert accepted his heinous crime, our next individual did not accept it and also did something shocking in court. <laughs> The case revolves around Daniel Nicholson. In September 2020, in Christie's Beach Magistrate's Court, Daniel Nicholson was present for a hearing of a previous crime. As the court proceeded, Daniel decided to do something that would leave everyone in shock and awe.
Nicholson was handed a one year, nine months and 18 day prison sentence with a non-parole period of one year. Although Daniel's target was at least able to escape the attack, the same is regrettably not true for our next victim. You further find the allegation that the defendant personally used the firearm to wit a nine millimeter handgun. The incident was centered around Luis Bracamonte. On October 24th, 2014 in Northern California, Luis Bracamontes ended the lives of two police officers. The cops traced the gruesome acts to Luis and then charged him with the crimes. For the judge to swiftly decide on the appropriate punishment, the jury provides a verdict on the suspect's future course of action. This case was no different. Madam Clerk, please read the verdicts. Here in Court of California, County of Sacramento, the people of the state of California plaintiff versus Luis Enriquez Monroy Bracamontes, defendant. Case number 14F07390, Department 21, verdict count one. Regarding the charge in count one, Luis Enriquez Monroy Bracamontes did unlawfully and with malice aforethought commit murder in the first degree of Sacramento County Sheriff's Deputy Daniel Oliver we find the defendant guilty. We further find the allegation that the defendant used and intentionally and personally discharged a firearm to wit a nine millimeter handgun and thereby approximately caused the death to be true. Special circumstance number one. We further find the murder of Sacramento County Sheriff's Deputy Daniel Oliver was committed by the defendant and that Sacramento County Sheriff's Deputy Daniel Oliver was a peace officer who was intentionally killed while engaged in the performance of his duties while said defendant knew and reasonably should have known that Sacramento County Sheriff's Deputy Daniel Oliver was a peace officer to be true. Dated February 9, 2018, Signed four person jury number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. Yes. So say they all. Verdict count two. Regarding the charge in count two, that on or about October 24, 2014, Luis Enriquez Monroy Bracamontes did unlawfully and with malice aforethought commit murder in the first degree of Placer County Detective Michael Davis. We find the defendant guilty. We further find the allegation that in the commission of above offense, the defendant used and intentionally and personally discharged a firearm to wit a Sig Sauer Model 516 rifle, causing the death to be true. Special circumstance number two. We further find the special circumstance that the murder of Placer County Sheriff's Detective Michael Davis was committed by the defendant and that Placer County Sheriff's Detective Michael Davis was a peace officer who was intentionally killed while engaged in the performance of his duties while said defendant knew and reasonably should have known that Placer County Sheriff's Detective Michael Davis was a peace officer to be true. Special circumstance number four. We further find the special circumstance that the murder of Placer County Sheriff's Detective Michael Davis was committed by the defendant for the purpose of avoiding and preventing a lawful arrest to be true. Special circumstance number five, we further find the special circumstance that the murder of Placer County Sheriff's Detective Michael Davis was committed by the defendant while the defendant was engaged in the commission of the crime of carjacking and attempted carjacking to be true. Dated February 9th, 2018, signed for a person Jury number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. So say they all. 
verdict count three, regarding the charge in count three, that on or about October 24, 2014, Luis Enriquez Monroy Bracamontes did unlawfully and with no forethought attempt to murder Sacramento County Sheriff's Deputy Scott Brown. We find the defendant guilty. We further find the attempted murder was committed willfully, deliberately, and with premeditation to be true. Having found the defendant guilty, we find the allegation that the defendant committed the charged crime upon a peace officer, and the defendant knew, or reasonably should have known, the victim was a peace officer engaged in the performance of his duties to be true. We further find the allegation that the defendant personally used and discharged a firearm to wit a 9mm handgun to be true. Dated February 9, 2018, signed for person juror number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. So say they all. Verdict count four. Regarding the charge in count four, that on or about October 24, 2014, Luis Enriquez Monroy Bracamontes did unlawfully and with malice aforethought attempt to murder Anthony Holmes. We find the defendant guilty. We further find the attempted murder was committed willfully, deliberately, and with premeditation to be true. We further find the allegation that the defendant used and intentionally and personally discharged a firearm to wit a 9 millimeter handgun and thereby proximately caused great bodily injury to be true. We further find the allegation that the defendant <coughs> personally inflicted great bodily injury to be true. Dated February 9th, 2018, signed four persons, juror number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. Yes. So say they all. Verdict count five. Regarding the charge in count five, that on or about October 24th, 2014, Luis Enriquez Monroy Bracamontes did unlawfully attempt to take a motor vehicle in the possession of Anthony Holmes by means of force and fear. We find the defendant guilty. We further find the allegation that the defendant used and intentionally and personally discharged a firearm to wit a nine millimeter handgun and thereby approximately caused great bodily injury to be true. We further find the allegation that the defendant personally inflicted great bodily injury to be true. Dated February 9th, 2018, signed four person jury number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. So say they all. Verdict count six. Regarding the charge in count six that on or about October 24, 2014, Luis Enriquez Monroy Bracamontes did unlawfully take a motor vehicle in the possession of Chantel Robinson by means of force and fear, we find the defendant guilty. We further find the allegation that the defendant personally used the firearm to wit a nine millimeter handgun to be true. Dated February 9th, 2018, signed four person jury number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. So say you all. Verdict count seven. <clears throat> Regarding the charge in count seven, that on or about October 24th, 2014, Luis Enriquez Monroy Bracamontes <coughs> did unlawfully take a motor vehicle in the possession of Jose Cruz Salas by means of force and fear, we find the defendant guilty. We further find the allegation that the defendant 
personally used a firearm, to wit, a 9 millimeter handgun, to be true. Dated February 9, 2018, signed four person juror number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. yes. So say they all. Verdict count eight. Regarding the charge in count eight, that on or about October 24, 2014, Luis Enriquez Monroy Bracamontes did unlawfully attempt to take a motor vehicle in the possession of John Maxwell by means of force and fear we find the defendant guilty. We further find the allegation that the defendant personally used a firearm to wit an unknown caliber handgun to be true. Dated February 9, 2018, signed four person jury number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. So say they all. Verdict count nine, regarding the charge in count nine, that on or about October 24, 2014, Luis Enriquez and Roy Bracamontes did unlawfully and with malice aforethought attempt to murder Placer County Sheriff's Deputy Charles Bardo. We find the defendant guilty. We further find the attempted murder was committed willfully, deliberately, deliberately and with premeditation to be true. Having found the defendant guilty, we find the allegation that the defendant committed the charged crime upon a peace officer and the defendant knew or reasonably should have known the victim was a peace officer engaged in the performance of his duties to be true. We further find the allegation that the defendant personally used and discharged a firearm <coughs> to wit a 9 millimeter handgun to be true. Dated February 9, 2018, signed for a person, jury number 7. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. So say they all. Verdict count 10. Regarding the charge in count 10, that on or about October 24, 2014, Luis Enriquez and Roy Bracamontes did unlawfully and with malice aforethought attempt to murder Placer County Sheriff's Deputy Joseph Roselli, we find the defendant guilty. We further find the attempted murder was committed willfully, deliberately, and with premeditation to be true. Having found the defendant guilty, we find the allegation that the defendant committed the charged crime upon a peace officer and the defendant knew or reasonably should have known the victim was a peace officer engaged in the performance of his duties to be true. We further find the allegation that the defendant personally used and discharged a firearm with a Sig Sauer model 516 assault rifle and to be true. I'm sorry. And a 9 millimeter handgun to be true. Dated February 9th, 2018. Signed for person, juror number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. So say they all. Verdict count 11, regarding the charge in count 11 that on or about October 24, 2014, Luis Enriquez and Roy Bracamontes did unlawfully drive and take a certain vehicle to wit a Placer County Sheriff's Patrol vehicle without the consent of and with intent either permanently or temporarily to deprive the said owner of title to and possession of said vehicle, we find the defendant guilty. We further find the allegation that the defendant personally took or drove an emergency vehicle on call to be true. Dated February 9, 2018, signed four person J 
juror number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. So say they all. Verdict count 13. <clears throat> Regarding the charge in count 13, that on or about October 24th, 2014, Louise Enriquez and Roy Bracamontes did unlawfully and with malice aforethought attempt to murder Placer County Sheriff's Deputy Jeffrey Davis. We find the defendant guilty. We further find the attempted murder was committed willfully, deliberately, and with premeditation to be true. Having found the defendant guilty, we find the allegation that the defendant committed the charged crime upon a peace officer and the defendant knew or reasonably should have known the victim was a peace officer engaged in the performance of his duties to be true. We further find the allegation that the defendant personally used and discharged a firearm to wit a Sig Sauer model 516 rifle, assault rifle to be true. We further find the allegation that the defendant personally inflicted great bodily injury to be true. In February 9, 2018, signed for person juror number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. Yes. So say they all. Verdict count 14. Regarding the charge in count 14, that on or about October 24, 2014, Louise Enriquez and Rory Bracamontes, having previously been convicted of a felony, did willfully and unlawfully own possess and have custody and control of a firearm, to wit, a 9mm handgun, a 380 handgun, and a 6 hour model 516 assault rifle, and a 12 gauge shotgun. We find the defendant guilty. Dated February 9, 2018, signed for person, jury number 7. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. So say they all. Verdict count 15. Regarding the charge in count 15, that on or about October 24, 2014, Luis Enriquez and Roy Bracamontes did willfully and unlawfully possess an assault weapon, we find the defendant guilty. Dated February 9, 2018, signed for person juror number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. So say they all. <coughs> Special circumstance number three. <coughs> we, the jury, find that the defendant, Luis Enriquez Monroy Bracamontes, committed multiple murders within the meaning of Penal Code Section 190.2 sub A sub 3 to be true. Dated February 9, 2018, signed for person, juror number seven. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, is that your true and correct verdict? So say you all. Yes. Mr. Barber and Mr. Dawson, do either of you wish to have the jury polled? No, Your Honor. We respect and accept the verdicts. Uh, Madam Clerk, please record the verdicts. All counsel, do you waive reading of the verdicts as recorded? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, and that includes the alternate jurors, this case is not over. You're all still part of the case. All of the admonitions that I've given you before, don't talk about the case. Don't have any contact or receive any media having to do with this case. Stay completely away from any references to this case. Don't let anybody talk to you about this case. There will be a second phase. As you know, there will be a penalty phase. <coughs> You will all be back here at your regular staging area on March the 5th at 8.30. March the 5th at 8.30. We will mail you parking passes for parking that week. Thank you all. I want you to uh, step out now before anybody else leaves the courtroom. All the jurors. Remember that goes for the alternate jurors too. You're still part of this case.
Bracamonte was handed the capital punishment by the judge. Although Bracamonte ended the lives of two police officers, the person who killed our next victim was a much more vicious criminal. Why his back was under the top! You kept shooting him, man! You kept shooting him! The case was centered around Lucas Kendall. On June 1st, 2012 in Florida, Lucas Kendall ended the life of Kijuan Bird and left Michael Smathers paralyzed. The police were able to identify Lucas as the criminal quickly. Then he was accused of all the horrible things he did. It is impossible to predict a father's reaction following the death of his child. What was the victim's father's reaction in this case? He eventually decompensated to the point where he was sitting in a position, naked, not eating, and not interacting with any human being. Yeah, but my son is dead, man. My son is dead. He needs to go to prison. He don't need to be laying no no mental hospital. He need to, he need to go to prison, man. Come on, sir. He want to play crazy. He wasn't he wasn't crazy when he killed my murdered my son, man. He wasn't crazy then, but he crazy now. All of a sudden he crazy now. You want to lay in a mental hospital? You you want to murder my son, man, for nothing? When he was trying to get away from you. You to you, you were trying to get away from you, man. And you kept shooting him while his back was under the top. You kept shooting him, man. You kept shooting him. And his back, his back was tied to you, man. He was trying to get away from you. And you murdered him, man, like that. You murdered him, man, like that. Why are you doing it like that, man? And you want to play crazy, man? He ain't crazy. Lucas Kendall was sentenced to the maximum penalty of life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus another consecutive 30 years in prison. While Lucas carried out the unthinkable act without much remorse, our next individual was responsible for the ending of a young life who had his entire life ahead of him. <laughs> the incident revolves around Kyandria Cook. In 2017, in Florida, Keandria attempted carjacking with additional suspects, which led to the death of the owner. Soon the group was caught and charges were brought up against them. The suspect's family also endures the anguish of losing their loved one, in addition to the victim's family. KG guilty of all three charges, sentenced you to 20 years in state prison. Considering the nature of the offense and all the evidence presented in court, the judge imposes a just punishment. I think he got good in here, and I think he got potential. Don't lose sight of that. Um, <laughs> one of the things that was difficult about this is I'm not sure you've done how serious this crime was. I consider it a miracle uh, that this young man is alive. The other is uh, that after it happened, you did it again. Um, that's the one thing I couldn't get, get over with. Really. Is that knowing how dangerous and deadly it could be, you did basically the same thing again. And that was always a difficult part for me. Um, I'm going to adjudicate you guilty of all three in Texas. Um, as to count three, I'm going to sentence you to 11 years for a state prison. As to count one and two, I'm sentencing you to 20 years probation. They're all going to run concurrent. I mean, technically, your probation starts now, even though you'll be incarcerated for the first 11 years. Outbursts in court carry their consequences. Rarely does an inappropriate act go unpunished inside the court. For more videos about such individuals, hit the subscribe button.